What's up, guys? Hunter Doyle here from Philly Insider. I'm rocking the Sixers hoodie today, game day, but we got some Eagles news to talk about. I apologize for the glare and the mess in my room, my dorm. Um, I'm just doing this on the spot. So, look, Eagles re-signed both Boston, Boston Scott and Anthony Harris back. So, let's talk about Boston Scott first. Look, hasn't missed a game during his Eagles tenure. It's good to get durability back there. If Jordan Howard was a little more durable, might have him back there. But, look, Boston Scott... He's experienced, he's reliable, he's a good change of pace piece to have in the backfield. And, yeah, I think he can help keep your offense on time and rhythm. He can go from under center if you need him to. He can go from shotgun. He's a good pass catcher. Not the best pass protector, but hopefully we're not asking him to do that too much next year. I think Kenny's going to have a bigger role. Kenny can really pass protect very, very well. So, yeah, I love Boston. I think his patience and vision and ability to just wait for the holes to open up and then hit the hole and and get through there quickly um, is, is something that he's really good at. He's, he's not going to be he's not going to rush things in, in the backfield right he's going to wait to find the hole and i think he's gotten better at that over his years i think the biggest thing with boston scott that i like is an underrated factor he is a phenomenal goal line back seven touchdowns this year all came on the goal line within like three yards or so four yards a lot of times one or two yards like he he'll muscle his way in there and he can again he's patient so he just knows that if he waits that extra split second and he can find that crease he's in the end zone very good job in the goal line i think that's underrated you wouldn't think of him as really a goal line back because he's obviously five six but he is around 203 that's the thing with darren sproles he was five 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 i believe but you know he had the weight to play at the position so that's important but yeah love the move it was only 1.7 million for one year i think that's very smart you're not bringing him back long term i think kenny by like year three year four you're really going to start to use kenny a lot more i still think you're going to use him more next year too i think he's going to have an increased role but i think it makes a lot of sense and then anthony harris so this one th this is interesting to me you know i i don't want to say i i think the boston scott move means we might not bring back jordan howard just because i don't know i i feel like they want to give kenny more of a role or maybe maybe try to find someone a little more durable than howard or they could they could always re-sign howard after the draft i don't think his market's going to be that big just because of his injury history but with the Anthony Harris signing, I don't think it spells the end for Rodney McLeod, but at the same time, you know, I, I wasn't a fan of bringing Anthony Harris back. I, I didn't think he played that well this year. I think it depends on how the front is configured, right? Because if we're able to play more too high, I think that'll suit better to Anthony Harris' strengths. He was asked to play center field a little bit last year. I don't think he's fit for that role like he was when he was an elite safety in Minnesota, like 2018, 2019. That's not who he is anymore, right? He, he's probably a split high safety type of guy, maybe play a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage at times. I think he wraps up well underneath. He only had two missed tackles. I'll give him that. He wraps up well underneath in the run game and in the pass game. He recognizes routes underneath quickly. And I, yeah, I think he'll do okay if we're playing more too high next year. You know, I don't know if he has that range per se, but I'm not too mad at it. It's a one-year deal. He knows Gannon. There's familiarity there with the scheme. So that's a plus. But, you know, there is a part of me I, I was kind of hoping to get a little bit of a change in there, maybe a Kareem Jackson, maybe someone else. You know, I, I don't think we're out of the running for getting, a, a, a like, another safety, especially if we don't bring Rodney back. But I have a feeling they're going to bring Rodney back on a, on a you know, nice deal. And then maybe, maybe what they'll do is maybe they'll draft a safety and just have them kind of develop behind – mcleod harris and epps you know maybe maybe this rookie safety works their way up but it depends on when they draft one so yeah i'm interested what this means with harris if he you know he's going to be a starter you know who else they're going to bring in at the position uh, but i'm not i'm not mad at it while i wasn't like a huge fan of it i'm not necessarily opposed to it either also guys alex singleton has signed a one a little over one million to play with the denver broncos so he will be get, possibly you know contending for afc championship this year maybe super bowl but look I'm, I'm not mad at that at all you know singleton he brought the energy he was a good culture guy but the man gave up the fourth most catches and fourth most yards in coverage this year there's a reason yes he did lead the team in tackles and broke the team uh, tackle record of all time did have an extra game to do that for uh, just for context but Look, at the same time, a lot of those tackles were because he, he was getting targeted a lot, and they were running the ball in his direction in the middle because they knew he was going to miss some tackles. He missed 20 tackles last year, 19 if you go on pro football reference instead of PFF. I mean, kind of the same thing. But, yeah, he, he, he had a tough time wrapping up last year. I think his, his, he's best fit to be a fourth or fifth linebacker, preferably fifth if he were to come back here, you know, and he obviously won't. But more of a obviously i think that indicates you know obviously more of a special teams guy he's a good special teams player but we already have sean bradley who's like that fourth fifth guy and play special teams right we don't necessarily have a need for that so 
I'm not mad at all. I think they're going to bring in some other guys here, even if it's not necessarily major names in the draft or free agency, which I think we could see. But, you know, even if it's not anyone really of, of significance, you know, someone who's probably an upgrade from Singleton, hopefully. So I'm not mad at that move at all. But, yeah, that's my, that's my thoughts on it, guys. Let me know if you guys have any other thoughts on that. It's a shame. I, saw, I thought he showed flashes in 2020, fit his run gaps very well. But, you know, I, I don't think he necessarily did as well this year. Coverage was really an issue. Um, yeah, I, I just think he takes the bait way too often, doesn't read his keys very well. So that's what I'll say on Singleton. So I just wanted to get a quick video out on this. I know this was super rushed, but thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your guys' thoughts on the move. I'm I'm sure we'll be going more in depth as this off season goes. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. So run baby run, fly goes fly. We'll see y'all later. God bless.